How are we doing? I'm Sean. This is the first time that I'm going to make a video like this. I'm actually going to record myself demonstrating some of the fighting scenes where I want to talk about or criticize. I'm going to look awkward because I have no actual fighting experience. The last fight I had was um, 7 years ago back when I was 13. I mean that wasn't really a fight though because um, I was chasing after a person that was too fast for me. <laughs> Or back when I was 15, you know, that was much more of a scuffle. When someone tried to rob my phone and the, the moment I show resistance, the perp just ran away. Since I'm making this video, I might as well give you some context and um, commentary. I would call myself an action choreographer despite not having published anything about fighting. I'm trying my best to learn how to draw with a cursor and uh, when I feel like I'm able to, I will start drawing action novels. Most of my knowledge comes from my survival instincts and self-defense videos. And no, it's not from the ones where there's a coach teaching you how to fight. It's from the ones where there's actual attacks like robberies, murderers, and um, ethnic attacks, etc. That and like um, some realistic fighting scenes from certain movies, especially Jackie Chan. Realism will be considered heavily on this video but I would make it so that it's not too uninteresting because this is just a video that I wanted to make just to talk about action choreography before I actually start the video I'll just show important parts where I want to talk about where it's interesting where I want to criticize a bit because of fair hues so without further ado let's start the video <laughs> I don't know why Ishizaki didn't struggle more, I thought he would at least move around to, to free himself from the arm lock. To free yourself, you should try to walk around in circles, to the left or to the right, uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise. But I guess it's just a shock that Ishizaki didn't expect Ayano Koji to be this strong. Ishizaki! <laughs> that like tap. <laughs> Albert there was actually very vulnerable, he had his right reefs open to Ayano Koji. Ayano Koji could have just incapacitated Albert from there. If you didn't know, getting hit in the liver hurts a lot. One meat punch, you don't even have to put too much force into it. One punch to the liver is enough to incapacitate someone. Ayano Koji could have legitimately killed Albert there by um, causing internal bleeding. <laughs> but yeah, Ayano Koji wasn't there to kill someone. <laughs> Oh yeah, those hand movements, I actually prefer to fight like this too if I ever get into a fight. I don't know what specific martial arts this is called, but having your arms open is just more flexible because just in case you have to catch feces. I think this is what you call a professional fight, because in real fights, the average person would just charge in when fighting, and if they close their distance too much, they would become vulnerable because they're within the range outside of their reaction time, leaving their necks vulnerable when they're too close. It would still be hard to knock someone out being that close, but then again, with proper footwork, and you can cause enough pain for the attacker to stop by, hitting, by constantly hitting them in the neck. Or eyes too, because again, if you're too close, you won't be able to react in time from attacks. Okay, that part's actually interesting because Ayanoji grabbed onto Alberto while blocking the right hand swing, so that's actually pretty cool. This is actually quite cliche, but I'm going to talk about the kicks first. In real fights, kicking is not really practical. Yes, kicks are powerful, but kicks are very easy to intercept just by closing in your distance, grabbing their leg, or like you don't even have to grab, you just have to get close enough where the kick isn't powerful. Um, get, get close enough to where only their knees hit you. And in this scene, you could tell that there are a lot of openings where I don't know Koji could have just easily counter Ibuki and push her down. Not like that, dear purpose. Because usually when you want to stop someone from kicking, it's very easy to just trip them and then make them fall down. And in real fights, when you fall, that's when you're most likely not going to get back up. If it's a high kick, just grab the leg like that. If it's a low kick, yeah, you can just, you know, time it properly to catch the kick. Then you kick with your right leg, your left leg is open, so you just trip them and then you push her down. 
And about the cliche part, when you're knocked out, usually there will be signs of struggle because of your nervous system. This is different from spazzing out, by the way. If you're spazzing out, then the person is most likely suffering from concussion. Future Sean here, I'll just insert myself to solve my problems. Ayano Koji could have done something here with Ruin's back open, but he didn't because I think the fight would end too fast. <laughs> That push right there is so strong, like how light is Ruin or how strong is Ayano Koji. You don't just push a teenager, a muscular teenager in fact. Swinging your fist like this is actually very slow. Yes, it's powerful because of the momentum you're carrying, but usually people would use those swings when touching around, because that's when they have the momentum and you know, they twist their body and with, their, with the strength of their foot pushing them forward it would become much faster than, than just swinging it like this. So yeah, Ion Koji is really strong, but then again, you can try it yourself. Swing, swinging your arm like that, it's not as fast as punching someone like this, so... I think I've said this at the beginning of the video, the animation, the colors, are made so difficult for the viewers to see what actually happened. I had to replay the scene twice just to make sure that I understood what I've watched. I actually don't have any opinion on that elbowing part. It's good, but in a real fight, it's impossible for someone to stay stationary like that. I'm talking about Ruin. If a real person was in that situation, that person would have most likely struggled by um, falling down towards Ayano Koji or just be completely knocked out, I guess depending on where you hit your elbow at. This part is actually acceptable because you may think that a normal person wouldn't be able to react to it. The animation team made it obvious that Ruin was charging his attacks so that us, the viewers, can see what attack is going to happen next. So basically, yeah, uh, this is actually quite realistic where the victim, the defender, has enough time to react. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about that scene. Okay, this scene right here is difficult to see, but you can actually see Ayano Koji's left hand connecting to Ryuan's face. I want to talk about this scene specifically because when you spin, usually you have the advantage of hitting your target and dodging. Because with proper footwork, you can actually retreat while swinging your attack. But in the following scene, you can notice that Ryuan's footwork is intercepted by Ayano Koji. And that is why Ryuan fell down after that. That scene where Ryan pushes Ayano Koji against the wall. To actually get out of that lock, what you normally would do is to push the opponent to one of the side because you know, you're being pushed against the wall. The opponent can easily lock you in by spreading your legs, like how Kurozawa did. So that bit is a bit illogical to me because maybe Ayano Koji actually timed it correctly by bouncing off the wall and then pushing Ryan off. But that would hurt a lot. I wish that camera was a bit lower so you could see Ayano Koji's foot tripping Ruin onto the ground. When I first watched this scene, I was wondering why Ruin didn't try to do a back row to escape from Ayano Koji's grip. But then I realized that Ayano Koji grabbed his right hand and pushed against his chest. With Ayano Koji on top of Ruin, if you're on top of someone, you can basically restrain them by pushing with your body weight, you push outwards, and with your hand, the one that, that's grabbing onto the opponent's arm, you push towards the other direction, so it creates like this kind of force to ensure that he, uh, the opponent can escape. When you roll back, yes that leaves you vulnerable, but you should try your best to use your shoulders like this, protecting your neck, and then use your arms to protect your, um, your eyes. This is why you see people have their shoulders up and then have their arms up to protect their heads. It's going to hurt, but it's not going to do significant damage except for your eyes and your neck. With Ruin's left hand being free, I am still wondering why he didn't bother to use his left hand to protect his face. Maybe he's scared. 
Are we going to ignore the fact that they all fought with their blazers on? I'm surprised that none of their shirts were torn. Yeah, I think I went through everything that I wanted to talk about. So if I miss anything, I'll just leave my comments in the description below like the usual. Thank you for watching. I hope I don't regret this. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video and subscribe to stay tuned for more of my content, I guess. That's everything. And I, again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care.